Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try and fix this PlayStation 3. So this is one of the original ones, a fat version, but this one is not backwards compatible. This is model number CECHG03 and it's already been tampered with, you can see it's been opened there. I don't know if the hard drive's in it, I have just unpacked this now. I got this from Danny, an eBayer that I buy many of my stuff from. So uh, I got it in the job lot with other stuff. Paid £30 for the job lot. Had other things like Xbox 360s and uh, laptops and stuff in there. So, uh, yeah, when I've uh, had a look at this plug here, you can see that it is very, very rusty. Or burnt, I'm not sure. Looks more like rust to me. So let's just do a quick test on this lead before we plug it in. So I've got my meter set to continuity. Let's go across the fuse. Right, the fuse is actually okay. Let's go between the points here and here. Right, so Earth's okay. We've got live on this side here. So that is live here. Right, so there's nothing happening with live. Let's just go straight onto the fuse. Okay, so we've got live there. Yes, yeah, so we've got live there, but yet not on the plug. So obviously there's an issue between there and there. And let's go to neutral. And there's nothing happening on neutral either. Right, so this plug is definitely faulty. Let's get another plug from our uh, soldier station. And let's try this one here now. This is rattling around the place. It doesn't, it doesn't sound very healthy on the inside. Right, let's plug it in and see if it does anything now. Might be just a faulty lead. Right, let's turn it on at the back. On. Let's see if we have anything. Right, okay, so there's no lights on the front panel here. Let me get a disc and put it in here just in case it's some issue with the actual buttons at the front. Right, let's see if it takes the disc. No, in fact, it feels like there might be a disc in there. Oh, you never know, I might get lucky. It might be a good game. Right, so there's nothing happening there at all. Uh, do you know what? I've never, I don't think I've ever had a PlayStation 3 fat that has no power whatsoever. No. Right, let's take it apart and see if we can find out what's wrong with this. Right, let's get this thing apart and we'll see what's happening on the inside. Actually, first, should we see if there's a hard drive in here? Yes, there is. Excellent. Oh, it's got a nice bit of dust on it. Uh, 40 gigabyte. So that might well be the original one. I might as well leave that out. That's going to take quite a while to take apart. So there's a little kind of Torx security screw under here, and then the cover slides down, and then that will expose a load of other screws then. So now I have to undo all of these everywhere where there's an arrow and S means the short screw because there's just one little short screw and all the others are the same length. Right, and there's a tiny little catch that you just have to undo just here and that will lift. Just push that in and that will lift this up. Right, so there's a nice bit of dust and stuff, so although it has been taken apart, it doesn't look doesn't look like it's been messed around too much. Oh, hold on a minute. One second, how does this work here now? So we've got the buttons here. Oh, okay, they just press down onto these little contacts here. Right, so that's straight on the board there. So it'd be unlikely that they would go, go faulty. Well, let's just have a quick look, see if everything is connected and stuff. So the drive's connected there. We've got this connected here. So I suppose the first thing I'm thinking is, is it a power supply fault? Because we're not getting anything, are we? And yet all the cables are definitely connected. Yeah, so let's see what's happening here. So we've got a connector straight into the back. So let's undo this one. And let's see if we have continuity between here and here. Could be a problem with the actual power switch itself, couldn't it? Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take out this disk drive. I 
I have to remember, even if I can't get it working, I need to find out what disc is in here. Alright, so we've got two contacts here, so again, let's go to continuity. Let's put our probe in one. And let's see, right, so we're getting continuity from the grey one to this one here. So now the white one should be going to the other side, which it is. And now let's flip the switch and see if it kills it. Yeah, so it kills it there, flip it, and it goes back on. Let's see if it kills it on the, uh, on the other side as well. Yeah. Right, so I think the power's getting through to here and it looks like the switch is okay. So the next thing to suspect would be the power supply here. So let's, let's disconnect it. be thorough, I should ch just check that earth connection as well, shouldn't I? Yeah, and obviously the earth is at the time whether the switch is uh, fixed or not. There we go. Definitely feels loose on the inside. I think this is the thing that's rattling around. Yeah. <laughs> Something's definitely not right in here. I think we can safely say it probably is the uh, power supply that's faulty, which is good because I'm sure you would be able to get them relatively cheaply. But let's just see if we can take this apart. Now I've got to be careful because remember there was 240 volts going into this and there was nothing coming out. So there's a good chance that capacitors in here are going to have a nice bit of power in there to shock me. So uh, I'm going to take care. Again, I say it in my videos, apologize, uh, apologies to my subscribers who probably get bored of me saying it, but please don't copy what you see in my videos because I may not be doing things the correct way or the safest way. I have got a shock in the past and uh, if you copy me, you might end up getting a shock as well. So just take it just purely for entertainment. Curious to, I'm curious to see what is actually loose in here. So I think what's happened is this has probably been dropped. And that kind of makes sense because the disc and everything is left inside. So I don't think this, I think this is a real genuine one. I don't think this has been passed through loads of people like some other ones that you get on eBay. I normally have quite a good success rate when I'm buying stuff from Danny. Right, okay. There we go. Bridge rectifier, I reckon that is. <laughs> Look at that, amazing. Okay, be careful now. Let's, uh, so that's completely broken off from there, but you know what? That might be repairable if I can actually just get onto the contacts. Let's try to get the power out of this board because there's two mean looking capacitors and they look like there's uh, a lot of power there to, to shock me. So let's see if we can get to the other side of this. So what have we got here? Uh, we have a screw here. Is that the thing that is it just one screw? Let's have a look on the other side. I think so. And that must be like the 12 volt that goes into the uh, board. I presume it's 12 volts. Let's see what it says here. Right, AC input to 20 volts to 40 volts. DC output. We've got a 12 volt at is that 23.5? Wow, 23.5 amps. And we've got a 5 volt at 0 0.6 amps. Good, that's using quite a lot of energy, isn't it? Right, let's uh, take this apart here. So I believe a bridge rectifier is what converts AC into DC. So we have 240 volts coming in here and then this will convert the AC to DC. So I believe it's a bridge rectifier because we have, well you can see there, look, you can see the AC pins in the middle. Can you see the little sign there for AC in the middle? And then we got the positive of the DC and the negative of the DC. So obviously there's a complete break in the circuit here so no power is going to be going through it. Do you know what, if it is that, I mean obviously there could be other faults but that is like the kind of perfect fix, isn't it? Because it's just a, a clean break. You see something rattling, you take it apart, and it's obvious. You haven't got to spend hours trying to fault find these MOSFETs and stuff like that. 
filter over here. It's your way of discharging the capacitors unless I get underneath them. Come on, come out now. Excellent, come on. Brilliant. Right, let's be real careful. So now I wonder why dropping it knocks this one off and not, uh, I don't know, I'd have to, uh, let me drain the capacitors and have a look. I'm sort of wondering why this got the brunt off the fall because it's quite a light item. It's not exactly as if this was really heavy and momentum took it off. Right, so you can see the demarcation on the board. So it says here, hot, cold. Uh, well, let's drain it and then we can worry about what's what. So we've got two massive capacitors here and I presume there. So let me get my little thingy here. So this has a, I can't remember what size of resistor. In fact, I put about three resistors in here to drain it, to convert the, the power into heat. Let's just see what we have with our meter. Oh, okay, it's not showing anything. Well, actually, think about it. Hold on. The electricity wouldn't have got through to the capacitors, would it? Because the bridge rectifier was gone. So the capacitors would be uh, on the DC side, wouldn't they? So the, uh, the power would have gone in. The power would have gone in via these two at the back here and made their way through here and wouldn't got through the bridge rectifier. So I should be safe to work on this. So let's just... Uh, short out these capacitors just to make sure they weren't measuring anything. Okay. So I think I'm going to be safe to work on this. Just using the back of my hand so if it does shock me it's going to throw me this way rather than grab it. Right, okay, I'm happy. I'm happy to work on that now. Okay, so we've got two 40 volts going in here, these contacts here. They then go off to, I can't see where they go over there. What do they, they, they go through, oh, there's a fuse here. Should we try the fuse? There's a little fuse tucked away in here. So let's measure that fuse. Excellent, so the fuse is okay. So it goes through the fuse to here. And then that trace goes down to uh, this area here through this thing, which would this be? Would this be a massive capacitor to stop noise going back onto the actual house wiring? Looks like it's going through these coils, and then from there it's going to go through the bridge rectifier, isn't it? And you can see there positive, negative, and the AC. So I know which way to put it back on. So now, why did this take the brunt of it? So we've got negative this one here. Yeah, it's labelled up here as well, so basically it just needs to be soldered on this way. So I wonder why this got it. Seems weird to have a clean break, doesn't it? Right, well, should I just try to solder that back onto there and see if I can get away with that? So we've got a little through hole one here and then I wonder whether that would be okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a note of that number. I'm going to look online and see if I can actually buy them. Then if it works, then for peace of mind, I might just get a new bridge rectifier rather than relying on the solder joints. And also, can we test this here? Let's see if this is testing okay. Bridge rectifier is something like four diodes, isn't it? So that would mean that it should be just getting a read in one way and not the other. Let's just double check that now. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Something, something, something. I bet it's okay. Well, I'm just gonna find out how much these are. 
had a look online and you can definitely get them TS25P, I believe that's 05G. It's a bridge rectifier, 600 volt, 25 amp, SIL, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, Mouse UK 182 and Reshelt, don't know how to pronounce that, dot com, £1.10. I don't know about minimum orders or delivery charges, I don't know if that's including VAT or excluding VAT, but either way, it's not going to be an expensive item. So I'm going to try to solder this one in. It's going to be hard because there's not a lot of room. But then if it works, and if there's no other issues, because for example, this might have the red flashing light of death, it could have the yellow light of death, etc., etc. So I'm willing to solder this up, bodge it in a way, just to see if it works. And then if it does, I can always buy one of these. It's not going to break the bank. So let's try to solder this in. I think what I'm going to do is try to just put solder on these bits to begin with, because then when I put the top bits on and add the heat to it, I'm hoping it will kind of make it easier to... Uh, stick together and then what I really need to do is kind of put solder each side of the legs to, to make a, an okay connection. Annoyingly there's a, a, a ground here that needs soldering as well, can you see this kind of lump at the very end where it says D103. So I don't know how good a connection that one is actually going to make. Right, well I've put quite a lot of solder on there, now let's try to get some solder on these pins here. Right, well I've got a bit of solder there and on the bridge rectifier as well, so now let's add a little bit of flux and then hopefully that will kind of clean it all up and melt them all together and then I can add more solder on top of that as well. I'm just going to try and do the first one and then work my way along. Now it's, good. it's a lot harder now because I put the balls of solder on, it's not really sitting in its broken place that it was sat in before. Let's see what happens. Right, amazingly, that's on. It's on a bit crooked, but I can straighten that up in a bit. I'm just going to try to add more solder to it. Right, so they've all connected apart from the second one here, and there's still a gap on the second one, so I'm going to try and get that one again. Right, and I know what happens with that second one. It's actually melted all the way through there. There we go, I need to push it back through. Taking away the snots of solder that's uh, stuck to the bottom. I'm going to give that a good clean now with IPA and we'll have a real close look at it. Okay, so that is it. So let me zoom right in now to show you the bodge job. Right, so you can see that one's definitely connected. That one is. Yeah, the second one's connected as well. Third one's connected, but look, it looks like they've all kind of raised up a bit, don't they? Mind you, it's hard to tell because there is a pin. Remember, there is a pin coming up here, and also these were kinked down. So maybe they are quite close to each other.
that one looks connected and the last one looks connected and then that one there looks connected to there. So let's try and get a reading now with our multimeter from the top to the bottom and then we know they are connected. Now, as I said, I don't know how safe this is going to be because obviously this is 600 rated right, to 600 volts and will those bits of solder, for all I know, they could be very thin in some parts. I mean, it looks like there's big blobs there, but uh, maybe this is no longer rated for 600 volts. But remember, this is just to see if the thing's working, and if it is, then I will be replacing that. I wouldn't be really happy with just leaving that as it is. I get wary when there's anything to do with mains voltage. Right, so I'm going on the actual pin at the top now, and there. So we've definitely got continuity there. Going on the top again, not the solder, but the top. Right, and we've got continuity there. And here, yeah, so the shield's on there, and that one's there. And now let's just quickly measure them again, make sure that there's no shorts across them. So we want to make sure that this shield isn't shorting with any of the others. Oh, but that's fine, because that's a negative, isn't it? So that is going to be shortened. In fact, sorry, it's on the same rail there. Yeah, that's all on the same rail. There's all these. Okay, so that's fine. Not shorting, not shorting, not shorting. And let's just do a quick diode test again, see if it's doing the same as it was before. Something. 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 Nothing, nothing, nothing. Yeah, I think that will uh, I think that will be okay. Let's pop it in and see what happens. Do you know it might be cheaper actually? It might be cheaper, well not cheaper, but it might be better just to buy a whole new power supply off eBay. I bet you can pick them up very cheap. And then you see I've got spares to fix ones in the future. That might be a better option. Okay, so that's back together now. Right, so I feel like that's safe to work on now. Let's pop the hard drive back in. I'm going to choose the power supply from my uh, little station here, my solder station. And let's see, I'm going to stand back just in case it does go bang on me. Right, so that's in. Let's see now what's going to happen. Turn it on. Excellent, we've got a red light at the front. Brilliant. Look, we have a red light. Should we turn it on? Well, first of all, let's eject. Yes, green light. Stay on green. Brilliant. So maybe there isn't a disc in there then. No, it mustn't be a disc in there. Let's pop one in and see if it spins up. It's staying on green though, isn't it? Blue light meant there's a disc in there. You know what? There is a, there is a disc in there. Why is it not ejecting? Right, so it looks like there's going to be a problem with the. Uh, there's something else has been jammed in there. I can't remember what the blue light means. I thought that means it was reading a disc. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's turn it off. Is it going to turn off? No, it doesn't want to turn off. I 
Right, let's just uh, turn it off at the back. I'm going to hold down the eject now and turn it on at the thing and that will put the fan test on. Excellent. Okay, so you can see now that's running that. Right, okay. Now it's flashing red, but that might be normal. So let's uh, let's put it into the TV and let's see if we're getting any display. See what happens now. So we're going to turn this on. I've got it in HDMI. I don't know if the last person had it in AV or not. Uh, I think you just have to hold down the power button or something from memory. But anyway, let's put it on HDMI one. And now let's turn it on at the back. We've got the red light here. Let's see if it displays anything. Yeah, 1080p, 60 hertz. Brilliant, right, let me get myself a controller. Okay, I've just uh, loaded up one of the digital games that appears to work. It looks like the user's name is Bob and uh, it's not connected to the internet but I just checked a, a Wi-Fi scan and it is picking up my, uh, my network. So I think all this appears to be okay. So I think what we should do is take it apart again and now let's have a look. It might be a physical, like a mechanical problem with the hard drive. So uh, maybe some kid or something's jammed something into it, maybe it's bent. Who knows? But uh, let's take it apart and see if we can work out what's happening with this. So let's get this back on the blue map. Now let's just concentrate purely on this here. Right, so we've got little screws here and here. Let's start with them. I'm hoping just to find some kind of mechanical blockage. Actually, I'm not sure if that's bowed or not. I don't know if that's the black velvet that looks bowed or whether it's the actual metal or not. Let's get a let's get a ruler. Well, I haven't got a ruler, but I've got a pencil to hand. Yeah, look, that's bowed. Maybe it just needs taken off and pushing back out again. Something might be fouling on the inside. Anyway, let's take it apart because I won't mind seeing what's inside it anyway. Right, okay, uh, I don't know if that would really, I don't know if that would really affect it. Or maybe it would because maybe this slot was too, uh, too tight. I don't know. Right, let's see what's happening here. Right, so that's what's stopping it from going in. You can see a big lump of white there. So why is that not dropping? Why is that not dropping when I put the disc in? You know, why is it up there now? I want to see if I can take this top off. Then we've got another couple of screws. Oops, right, I've got to make sure this doesn't all spring out of me where I don't know where it goes back on again. So, does that just, so that's magnetic there, so that's fine. And here we go. Excellent, okay, well I'm getting somewhere now. All looks very clean. Right, so why isn't this thing dropping? Weird. So that's the first thing that the disc hits. Unless there's a 
Is there some sort of sensor or something before there? No, there's no sensor there. Hmm. So this can't go in with that there like that. Whoops. Right, be careful now. Is that going to stay intact? Right, okay. Hmm. So how does this work? What's this thing for? Uh, you put the disc in. How does it know that you're putting the disc in? I mean, it looks like this thing shouldn't be here at all. That doesn't make sense because look at it. That's never going to be able to move down. It's blocked by that thing there. This looks like it's to stop the disc from falling out when it's playing, maybe. Oh, there's so many of you shouting at the screen right now. But I can't work it out. switches here but that's probably to where it reaches the end of its travel how what uh, what is this thing here oh it must travel no it doesn't travel it's stuck there it can't travel anywhere oh but it drops down when this moves over that should drop down look it's like on a ramp here and when that moves across here, this thing should go down into its little home down there, which will then allow the disc in. And then when it pulls back, it pushes this back up because the disc is in. So right now it thinks there's a disc in here, which I suppose makes sense because there was a blue light. I'm also getting distracted now, but you can see two lenses. So one must be for the Blu-ray and one must be for CDs and DVDs. Two lenses here. Right, so it thinks there's a disc in here, which is wrong. So this needs to be over this way here. There we go, it's dropped now, look. Can you see there now? There, excellent. So that's dropped, so you have to turn this here. Okay, I'm not gonna force it. I just kept turning this here and it pushed it back there. And now this is lifted. I'm not sure if this is lifted up or down. So now in theory, I should be able to get the disc in here. But I want to know why was that up? How did they manage to get that up without, uh, with no disc in here? Okay, let's put it back together and see if it's behaving any differently. These things must move as the disc goes in. It's a very clean PlayStation. I'm just going to straighten this up. Could it have just been dropped again and the impact somehow threw all the, uh, you know, threw it all one way? thinking about it I have PlayStation 3's now that are unrepairable so you know the one that I mucked up the D-lid on and uh, I think also there was another one that I couldn't fix so maybe the power supply could be used from that one and save me buying one or save me even buying the, uh, the bridge, bridge rectifier
take them. So I'm just going to uh, let's see if it will turn on via the disc. Yes, it will. Is it going to take it? Yes, it's taken it. Excellent. I can hear it spinning up. Fantastic. Now let's see if it's going to eject or not, and then see if it will go back in again. Yes! Excellent! Right, go back in again. Woohoo! So I'm not sure if it's actually properly reading it. We'll plug it back into the TV and see. But it's definitely taking it now. Oh, what a result! The only thing is though, look, that on and off button is not working to turn off, is it? Let's take this off and see if we can actually see. Maybe it just needs, uh, maybe it just needs lifting up a little bit. Let's see if that makes any difference. Could be the third fix. No. So now, could it be something to do with here? You know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to just look online to see if there's like a common fault with this. If there is, then it would save me having to fault find it for ages. But I can't find anything about it online. Just people say to take it apart and clean it. So, uh, but in my instance here, it's nothing to do with it being clean, but I will clean it with IPA just to see. But why does it turn on and not off? Whatever chip is responsible for toggling on, because obviously we're only tapping this, so it needs to toggle something on. Whatever is toggling it on is then refusing to toggle it off, maybe to do with heat or something like that. Now, let me clean it up to begin with and then see. Maybe I can have a, a quick look at the components just around here. Because, I mean, there is a chip, just in case it is this chip here. The thing is, it doesn't really affect performance because you can just easily turn it off on the controller, so I don't really see it as a hardship. But let's get the multimeter on these little components down here. Right, so I presume it's to do with these components down here. So it's like uh, this must measure some sort of resistance against your fingers because you're not actually pressing two prongs together, you're just tapping it and then it just starts to. Uh, it just starts to work. So these capacitors look like they're just in line. You've got continuity between there and there, there and here. We know the eject one's working okay. I wonder could it be something to do with this chip here? See, I'm pretty sure that somebody's going to know what this problem is and I think that would make a nice revisit video. You know, if I just had to change that chip out for maybe one of my broken PlayStation 3s, because I, ha I have to do a bit of work to this one anyway. You know, I've got to do work to the power supply. It all needs to be cleaned up and everything like that. So, uh, yeah, let's plug it in now and see if that's made any difference. So, look, it turns on okay. Watch this. Right, ready? Watch, I'm just tapping it, and it turns on fine. Eject works. So just let it fully load up and then just by tapping that it should turn itself off. Can you see? It's not doing it. Doesn't feel like anything's overheating. Yeah, okay, that's gonna be one for the comments. Let's get this back together and let's see if the disc is actually loading up again. Well, right, so as you can see, the games have loaded up fine. I've only done a couple of them, but both of them loaded up and uh, you can see now I'm playing this like it's intended. And considering the age of the system now, the graphics on a game like this, this is Gran Turismo 5, still look absolutely amazing. I think this is, I think this is uh, 1080p. I'm not sure if it's 60 frames a second or not. 
but it looks pretty good and looks pretty smooth. So uh, what I have noticed is, check it out, listen to the sounds. So it's okay when you've got it up loud, but that fan's kicked in quite a lot. Now this might be completely normal, if it is, that's fine. If you don't think that's normal, put it down in the comments because this is going to be one for a revisit. I will probably do the thermal paste. May or may not de-lid. I probably won't de-lid, but I'll definitely do the thermal paste. I definitely want to find out what's wrong with this on and off button. It only turns on and not off. I don't believe it's anything to do with a bad contact. I think it's whatever component is controlling that is not to toggling properly. Also, I need to get a new cover for this and I need to give it a good clean, and I need to sort out the bridge rectifier. I either get a proper one and solder it in, so it's like more of a professional job, or just change the unit out, the whole power supply, for one of my 40 PlayStation 3s, and then I can keep this one for spares, because this is a whole heap of spares in there for uh, future fixes. So I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this one here. To have the bridge rectifier, I think it was dropped, and I think that broke. And I don't know how it thought there was a disc in there when there wasn't a disc in there. I'm really confused how it could do that. You know, it had the thing in locked. So I suppose if I locked, looked in there now, that white thing would probably be up to stop the uh, disc from accidentally coming out. So uh, I really don't know how that happened. I presume it would have happened at the same time as the bridge rectifier, but who knows. So uh, a massive thumbs up for Danny for sending this over to me so quickly and uh, let me know about the job lot. Hopefully I will be able to make some videos on the other stuff in there as well. I really have enjoyed this one and I hope you have too. Uh, if you did, please give a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.